For more than a hundred years, the Church of the Good Shepherd has been a dynamic force in the Lexington community, worshiping God and serving God's people in so many ways. We share a heritage lovingly preserved, yet vigorously renewed for generations. As we enter the millennium, we need to address some problem areas and some promising possibilities through a major capital campaign called Vision 2000. Like any growing church, some of the needs are quite obvious, but there are also many hidden needs that most people don't see. This video provides an overview of our goals as we prepare for ministry in the 21st century. One of our primary goals involves refurbishing and enhancing our facilities to prepare for continued growth in size and service. This is the furnace room deep in the basement of our church. Here you can find the original boiler and duct work dating back to the 1920s. But as you can see, this equipment has long outlived its life. The heating and air conditioning equipment has to be nursed along to keep it running. That's why some of our rooms aren't quite warm enough in the winter and a little too warm in the summer. The main fuse box also needs to be replaced. It too is part of the original equipment installed back in the 1920s. This unit is so old, replacement switches are no longer available. That means in order to turn some of the lights on and off, you have to climb up on a stool and carefully twist some of the fuses. Needless to say, this is not a safe procedure. And then there are the restroom facilities. One concern we have is that there's no way for anyone in a wheelchair to physically get to any restroom that we have anywhere in any of our church buildings. But even if you could, after we carried this wheelchair down the steps, even if you could get to this restroom, you can see there's no way to actually get a wheelchair into the restroom. The restrooms need to be enlarged, the doorways widened, and the correct fixtures installed to meet handicapped accessibility standards. Other parts of the church aren't handicapped accessible either. For example, the only way to get to the undercroft is by way of stairs. An elevator and ramps are needed to help connect the various levels of our church. Another Vision 2000 goal is to connect the Bloomfield building with the main church building. On a cold, windy, and rainy day, the walk from Sunday school classes to church services is not a pleasant experience, especially when you're struggling with an umbrella in your Sunday best. Vision 2000 will also address problems with the church's administrative offices. The central office area is crowded and the day-to-day -day work creates a lot of inherent noise. But at the same time, I often have confidential meetings with members of the parish in this office discussing premarital counseling, crisis counseling, reconciliation of a penitent, or just helping someone orient themselves during a difficult transition in life. When they're sitting in my office with the door closed and they can still clearly hear the conversation being held in this space, they have to wonder if the secrets that they're sharing in there can be heard by everyone out here. It's a problem. The youth minister's office is a good example of overcrowding. People are constantly squeezing in to use the fax machine and one of the church's primary computers. Meanwhile, other staff members such as Lois Howard have their offices located in the Bloomfield building. It's very inconvenient to have to constantly walk back and forth between the two buildings. Mary Purcell offers pastoral counseling in the Bloomfield building. The locks and doorbells for daycare security and the out-of-the-way location make it more difficult for people to drop in for counseling. And being away from the main traffic uh, area, I'm not as hooked in to the, the um, flow of things that are going on. You might say that networking uh, is not as, as good as it was when I was next door. We also hope for a new parish hall. Our undercroft cannot comfortably accommodate our growing number of members. Whenever we have large dinners or major meetings, the room is filled beyond its capacity. A new parish hall could be used for a wide variety of activities for all age groups. Even though our church occupies half a city block, we do have space on our property that could be used for new construction. There are so many things we could do if we only had the facilities. In conjunction with a new parish hall, a new kitchen is also needed. The current size of this kitchen is equipped, it, it can effectively handle about 80 people, feeding 80 people at this time. But this evening we're going to serve 150 people and there isn't enough space for people to prepare the food as well as move the food effectively back and forth to a serving area. Equipment in the current kitchen needs to be replaced. This old rusting dishwasher caught the eye of the health department inspector who reduced the church's rating because of it. 
Another Vision 2000 goal is to alleviate overcrowding in rooms used for Sunday school and meetings. Some of the children's Sunday school classes share rooms with the day school. Every Sunday morning, these portable storage cabinets have to be wheeled into the shared rooms. The teachers must use these units to store their books and other teaching materials. The choir room has also become overcrowded, making it difficult to practice before each service. Additional space is also needed for worship support. The vesting room is a good example. Clergy, acolytes, and other worship service participants use this tiny crowded room before each service. The lighting and sound equipment in the sanctuary need to be improved. The current microphones, amplifier, and speakers are outdated. We need a new sound system that will make it easier to hear the services. Vision 2000 plans also call for a small chapel that would be used for children's chapel and another adult chapel to be used for small weddings, weekday services, or small funerals. Well, one of the things about a small area that, that's appealing is that it allows people to focus more on the spiritual side of why they're there. And, of course, with children, that focus is, uh, is very important. Our nursery facilities also need to be improved. In particular, the nursery rooms are hard to find, especially for visitors. Well, I remember when we first, uh, first came to Good Shepherd, the first thing we needed to know was where do we take the kids, and unless there's somebody ready at hand to take you, it's kind of hard to find, because you come in the front door of the church, and the daycare is nowhere near, so you have to kind of wind your way through the maze to get there. Another one of our priorities in our capital campaign drive, Vision 2000, would be to establish a garden and a columbarium here at the Church of the Good Shepherd. The garden would be useful because it would be a place that individuals, members of the church, people in the neighborhood could come and sit and rest and meditate, have some quiet time, and just be about God's creation. It also would be a place where we would begin the Easter vigil, lighting of the Paschal candle, and we would begin the Palm Sunday processions where we would have the blessing of the palms. In conjunction with a garden, we would like to build a colibarium, a wall or a structure in which cremated remains are placed. Usually it's an open area, then you put the cremated remains in and a plaque in front of it, and their loved ones are interred very near the church or very close to the church building itself. The Vision 2000 campaign ultimate needs are about $3.9 million. Now that may sound like a lot of money, but consider this. Nearly 50 years ago, with an annual budget of just $20,000, the Church of the Good Shepherd committed to a $200,000 renovation project. We now have an annual budget in excess of $700,000. If we had the same commitment, we would be looking at $7 million for renovation. Clearly that much is not needed, but that type of commitment is definitely needed. Our church truly is a treasure unto itself. We have some of the finest wood carvings and stained glass windows of any church in the United States. We could never replace what we have without spending millions and millions of dollars. Well, coming in here on a sunny day, the colors in these stained glass windows are exceptional. I don't know whether they would affect somebody the way they do me, but I can sit down and look at these wonderful windows and feel the presence of the Almighty. It's our time. A campaign of this type requires that everyone participate, not with equal gifts, but with equal sacrifice. Each person should be a joyful giver, a sacrificial giver. It's time for everyone to look toward our tomorrow. That's what Vision 2000 is all about.